Hi, my name is Valerie and I'm a maker. I'm a cosplayer, lapper, crafter and I love to repair stuff. For my newest project I craft the statues Staria and Austria from the Graz Stadtpark together with my friend Nina. It's a project out of curiosity how to work with different materials and it needs a lot of imagination. I hope you enjoy the crafting videos and have fun watching. Feels like I'm so I live in Graz since a few years and I drive past these two statues, Staria and Austria, almost every day. And almost every day I admire how beautiful they are, how they look in the rain, in the sunshine, there's always beautiful flowers in front of them. And for me they, they symbolize uh, female strength and power. And I love that there has been the spirit like 130 years ago already, because Hans Brandstetter, the artist who made those, made them in 1891. That's when they were placed on the main bridge here in Graz. And after the war they made a new bridge and they put the statues down. And now they're back again in the Stadtpark in Graz. Before we really started crafting, we made some research about it because I was very curious what he, what else he did. And he made a lot of beautiful female and male and whatever statues that look very Greek. They look like Greek gods and goddesses. The most famous one is the Waldlilie, kind of like a forest lily. And she's also in the Stadtpark and she was the first statue that he did. And he got very famous for it back in the day. And then he made at almost every important building in Graz um, some little statues in front of the uh, facades of the houses. There is also a very famous one in front of the university building which unfortunately got lost <laughs> before the war, which shows another model of Austria with the different uh, stuff on the head and then, uh, different hair. And uh, she is defending the arts on the left side and the sciences, which is female, which I really like, on the right side. It's from 1888. But yeah, it gave me some ideas about the whole costume from a different perspective. I went to the archive in Graz, it's the Steirisches Landesarchiv, where it's the official archive of the country, and I got some more pictures, and uh, it was very interesting for me to dig into the history of the life of Hans Brandstetter. I tried to find as many stuff about him and his work as possible. And he was a very creative guy and yeah, I found some drawings and some photos, very old photos, which showed, for example, that in his first model for Styria, in the first module, she had Edelweiss in her hair. It's a very famous um, Swiss and Austrian plant. So I would love to put that into my costume as well. I found a picture of a woman standing uh, in for Austria, which is very interesting and showed how, yeah, women looked back then and how a perfect uh, goddess-like woman would have looked back in the day. That discovery was nothing new. I mean, since thousands of years, people made statues and pictures of women and like personification of countries, of stuff, of rivers, of whatever it is. And yeah, it's called allegory and it means like there's an abstract thing like a state and now suddenly it's a person a personification yeah and there is a lot of those and they're really interesting um, for example we have the ones in Britannia Germania Germania uh, Helvetica in Austria and in France it's the Marianne so it's nothing new I just discovered it and I find it really really cool after doing the research and looking at all those pictures, we started crafting, uh, which actually started by yeah, defining materials. Um, I had a lot of stuff already at home, but what we needed anyways was uh, crafting foam. We got that from dinelabshop.de. Um, it's a very fine crafting foam, which you can heat up and form and also cut it and glue it together. And it's the basic foam which is used for lab stuff. And I'm very used to it because I craft swords and axes and weapons of any kind a lot of times and it's very nice to work with. Then when I thought about how to make those swords, I decided to go for a very cheap um, basic model and form it on for safety reasons and of course it's much easier to do it like that and we got lucky because Mytholon, a very famous lab supplier, had, an, had a sale and I got two swords for 15 euros each which is very nice. Other stuff which we needed a lot additionally to what I already 
owned was a lot of belts and I got them in the secondhand shops here in Graz as well as some clothing items like the fur coat from Austria which was a vest and I cut it apart and sewed it back together. And then we used a lot of warbler. We used three different kinds. It's the black, the pearly and the finest art warbler which I got originally from mycostumes.de for the fabric stuff it is basically all curtains <laughs> so I got all old curtains and I uh, cut them apart sewed them back together to get the right shape and some of them I needed to fix a lot and like I loved how to see the old material how it looks and I loved that the material was broken already and I fixed it and so it gets this very old look which I really really like so it gets more lively and for the leather parts, I cut apart some old skirts of mine. So I would say 85% of both costumes is upcycled material that I already owned or was yeah, something like a curtain before. And only the uh, crafting form and warbler parts are new materials. All the uh, colors, like acrylic colors and so on, that I used, I will show in each step that we work with. But basically I used a lot of primer and top coat for the foam stuff and some basic acrylic paint for most of the paintings and then some special stuff like um, gold wax for some stuff that needs to look more metal. For this project I used a lot of cutting knives, different kinds of scissors, acrylic brushes mostly, my sewing machine, a bit of Eva Plast and that's it. Stay tuned for part two, which is about the corsages of both ladies and the bells. <laughs>